Hello everyone, welcome. I am a large nerd man and this is Expeditions Viking. And it, it's actually it's the evening of my father's uh, funeral. I don't know a lot of this about this game. I it caught my attention when I was just uh, flipping through Steam, and uh, it looked like fun. I just finished Shadow on Dragonfall and I had nothing else to play. It's a turn-based kind of like Banner Saga and Shadow on mixed, and um, it seems really cool. It seems really cool. When you close your eyes, the image of his blazing ship shimmers in the dark behind your eyelids. It's not a common ritual this far south, but your mother, Astridr, who hails from the land of gates, insisted on it. So basically, what happened before was a, an intro with no music or sound at all, but it had text on it. So it's probably something that just messed up for, for some reason, I don't know. Uh, my father is dead. Uh, he was not. He was a thane, like a chieftain. Of, of a Viking clan, and he was a great warrior but a, a, a bad leader basically. And now, as his son, I am Thane after his death. <clears throat> he was uh, given a Viking burial, which is a blazing ship, meaning he was, you know, dead corpse on the body. I'm sorry, not a corpse, that's disrespectful. The body was placed on a boat, sent into the ocean, and lit on fire. That's what they're talking about here. All the things of the neighboring clans have come to attend your feast in his honor. Your father may not have been the most success successful thane, but as a warrior he commanded the respect of many. The guests are filing into your father's, your longhouse, the thanes and prefers, each trailing a modest group of warriors. Your mother leans in to whisper a few words of advice before she takes her seat. You should greet each of the thanes before the feast begins, but listen well, well to their words. My mother, Astridr Ingvarsdottir. My name is... Uh, I think it was Falki. I don't. I think so. I think so. I can't remember the name. My father's name. No idea. Few of them would benefit from making this a smooth transition. It will be important to know where they stand. So, characters with gold nameplates. A dialogue for you. All right. Quest marker. Sure. Optional marker. Sure. Let's check that out first. Uh, primary. School. Yeah. Sure. Um. Uh, over this. Yeah, sure. I can also talk about the character I made. He's a great axe, a Dane axe, like a two-handed, huge axe wielding, uh, yeah, fighter. I built him for dialogue, which I always do in every single RPG that allows me to to build for dialogue, diplomacy, and uh, see leadership. And just, just, uh, and a bow, just so he has a ranged ability. I'm Falki, I'm a leader, apparently. Foresighted leader. My father is Farulfur. I was born in 769, and this is... Alright, born Farulfur and Astrid in the year 769, the Julian calendar. Is that a normal cal calendar that we use? I don't know. With bright blue eyes and hair brown as the earth. You've grown to be a strong, tough, and keen man, but of little grace. Yeah, I have one finesse. You're known amongst your clansmen as a foresighted leader with a great command of the battlefield. Not sure if that takes uh, plays a role later in the game. Eskule Skullcleaver is the Thane of Yelling, which borders your area. Yelling is a large territory, and Skule is one of the most powerful Thanes in Jutland. Yelling has prospered under his rule. Good for the Skullcleaver. He's a good leader, apparently. He makes good decisions. Skula pushes himself away from the table with his foot, the chair making a grinding sound across the wooden floor. His face shows earnest sympathy. Falki, my boy, so sorry about your father. If there's anything the people of Yelling can do to aid you in these trying times, don't hes hesitate to ask. It's very kind of you, Thane Skula. Of course, we must all stand together against the Frankish threat. The French. No, French and... Um, I, I, I want to say... We're in Denmark right now? But I don't know. Don't know. I'm gonna say Norwegian, because that's where I'm from, and Vikings are only Norwegian, not Swedish or Danish, whatever. Screw everyone else. The French and Norwegians, lifelong enemies. Skuller leans towards you, resting his elbow on the table. Tell me, what are your plans for this place? How will you lead your clan? We need... no. Favor of the gods? Psst. No gods, only men. 
no gods, no kings. Isn't that, isn't that the same? Sorry about expanding your titans. You really are father for the sun, aren't you? Just take care and not lose touch of your people's needs and your eagerness to defend them. Let's have a deep sigh and lean back into his seat. How is that negative? Defending my people? I'm sure you know I, I fought with your father many years ago. We were very much of a similar inclination, he and I. That man had real taste for battle, not like his brothers. Mark my words, Falky. True bonds are forged in battle, not bound in blood. So he's... He's saying uh, it's a bad choice to focus on our defenses, but it's a good choice to go out and do battle. Seems kind of suspect though, doesn't it? He came to me for advice before he mounted his last journey. On account of my ties to Kopang, I should have warned him better about what he was getting himself into. Kopang? Is that like a marketplace or something? It's also a last name. I grew up with people with, with that last name, but I it means like market, I think. What does Kopang have to do with it? Like inside of Kopang, so it's a place as well. I mean, to the isles across the sea. England? Um, Great Britain, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so sorry. Terribly sorry. I've heard many stories about it, since I often go there to trade. Kopang, I guess. Not the Isles Cross the Sea. Your father wanted to hear if the stories were true. Ah, but I've taken too much of your time already. I know you have other guests to entertain. Perhaps we'll talk later, after a bit more mead. Scooter nods more to himself than to you, and turns his attention to the food on the table. Let's talk to Halfa Halfdanr. Halfdanr is the... Thane of a slightly larger clan that borders your lands to the east. He wears a solemn expression and nods heavily when you approach him. Farulfur is in Valhöll now, Falki. Hell? That has to be some sort of old way? I all those letters. I'm not sure. I say Valhall, as in Val Valhalla. But I guess probably allowed to say Hell as well. I don't know. There's no doubt about it. He died doing what he loved. But while he feasts among the heroes, you're left back here to sort out the pieces. You've got your work out, cut out for you. What do you mean? Your father man managed to make quite a few enemies in his time, most of them among his own clan. If you'll permit me to be honest, he never paid one speck of attention to the wishes or needs of his people. Surely you're not expecting your claim to leadership to go and cut tested? I'm the rightful thane. If anyone thinks otherwise, we'll sort it out the traditional way. By sword and axe. Good. Worse problems than this have been solved at the tip of a spear or the edge of a blade. May the gods favor you if it comes to that. Alfander empties his mug of mead in a single gulp, then slams the mug onto the table and calls for a thrall to, for a refill. Alright. So this, he has the same father as me? Yeah. <laughs> he has the same father as me because he's my brother. Funny how that works out. Your elder brother, Rurik. I uh, always have a pension for music. He looks up and gives you a warm smile as you approach him. Good quell, br brother. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up a lot when they change from words I usually use, you know, like Norwegian words and English. Good quell, quell meaning evening and good, like an old the old typey way of saying go. Good, good evening, brother. Rudy grins. I mean, my honored thane. How do you feel? I'm well, Rurik. I know our father is in Valhall now. Rurik smiles. You can barely hear his soft voice over the din of the feast. I'm certain he is. Odin would have to be a fool not to accept a warrior like him. Has everyone been treating you? Everyone knows you're the better warrior and a stronger willed man than I. Nobody wants me as their thane. To tell you the truth, I think our clansmen are almost as relieved as I am that you took on the mantle. I have to go be a good host now. Your brother flashes you a cheeky grin. You just use the old signal if you need help to get out of conversation with one of the other things. Busy entertaining your guests. The kettle is standing off to the side, holding a horn full of mead. The young hunter appears to be watching the feast with a faintly amused expression, and he nods respectfully when you come near. As busy as you expect. Why are you over here by yourself? Kettle winks conspiratorially. Trying to decide who to pick a fight with. I want this feast to be memorable and nobody tells stories of a feast without a fight. Jokes aside, have you seen Skulas Huskarls over there in the corner? Hrudgarda and Skaki. I've heard stories about them. Stories you tell? Stories you say? Say... Fuck. <laughs> Nephew seems to be expecting trouble too, but I, so I've decided to go easy on the mead and keep an eye out. I appreciate that. Never hurts to be careful. 
It throws its head back slightly towards Oslefer. Speaking of which, keep an eye on the big lug back there. He and his friends have been putting their heads together all night. I think he might be planning something. Oslefer's family, who wouldn't attack me? Kessler raises an eyebrow. Sure. You wouldn't do anything underhanded, but it's basically tradition for your families to fight over who gets to sit in the big chair. But this is your feast. I'll watch Oslefer and his friends. You should relax and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Feasts are always fun when they come as a part of uh, a dead parent. Aslefer is a distant cousin. Leadership of the clan has moved between your side of the family and his for generations. He's known as a skilled warrior and a hard worker. Aslefer sits with his two closest friends. Our condolences friends. on the passing of your father. At least he died the way he would have wanted. He will be feasting with the gods tonight. He looks up when you approach his end of the table. Neither of his friends acknowledges your presence. His tone is respectful, but slightly cold. Thank you, I hope there's no bad blood between us. Aslefer seems to consider this for a while before replying. It's so secret I didn't agree with how Fadulfer ruled our clan. Bearing this in mind, I don't see what gives you the right to succeed him. But this feast is in his honor, and I will not insult his memory here. Nor will I challenge your claim to leadership. Thank you for keeping these things separated. Aslefer simply nods once, and then he returns his attention to his companions. Let's talk to Ranghildr the White. Ranghildr the White is the most influential of our guests, of your guests, as the vassal of King Sigurd Ringer. <laughs> Sigurd Ringer. That's a name. That's a very good name. She's the current ruler of Denmark. She has come from the trade hub of Riba to the south, where she presides as the Jarl. She nods politely as you approach her seat. It's a beautiful ceremony, Falki. I extend my condolences for your, your loss on behalf of Riba and of the king. I must tell you, I advised him not to seek out the isles across the sea. We've all heard the stories of the unprotected coasts and their treasures, but there is more danger than the rumors let on. I'm not surprised they claim this life, but I'm glad at least he died with a sword in his hand. Did you know Farulfer well? I knew him as a warrior. We fought together on the Bravelier. And he struck me as a shrewd tactician. When your king needs you, I hope that you will serve him as well as your father did. My father taught me everything he knew about combat. Jarl Ranghildr nods once. I would expect nothing less of the man. Remember that no amount of practice is a substitute for actual experience. Thank you for accepting the invitation. We're honored that you couldn't make it. Of course. Hey! Wrap you. Oh, okay. Uh, your reputation with Riba has increased by Juan. This always pops up. Alright, cool. Excuse me, I must do the rounds. Enjoy the feast. The old shield maiden smiles. She gracefully slides back into uh, down into her seat, whereupon she spears a large piece of chicken with her knife and dumps it down her plate. So to Nefia. There you are. The feast seems to be off to a good start. Nefia is one of your oldest friends. Your families have always been close, and you grew up together in the village. She's just finished pouring your mother a cup of mead. Nice to see you out of your armor for once, winky face, winky face. Nefia snorts sarcastically. You've seen my sister in distress before. Surely that's the same thing. She closes her eyes and rubs the bridge of her nose with a finger. God, she was so excited to see me like this. I'll never hear the end of it. What is Eif Eifura? Eifura. Sardanic undertone creeps into Nefia's voice. My poor sister has a fever again. She has such a frail constitution. All is but cold is hard on her. Mother stayed home to care for her. That's strange that that's kind of pointed, pointed out. What do you think of our guests? She chuckles. Your fellow things are certainly a proud and graceful bunch, even as they plot to murder you and take your lands. That's certainly the sense I'm getting. She grins us, although I'm sure not all of them are actively planning to kill us. I have a weird feeling about Skule though. I doubt they call him Skull Cleaver for, not, for, for no reason. A fun fact, Skule means school, uh, where I'm from. So he's the... the s s s probably not that translation they, they used here, but... You know, still fun. The school of the, the Cleaver of Skulls. Halfdan replaced the lovable old grump, but I know he's had his eyes on our harbor for years. Ranghildr, I'm not sure about. She probably has nothing to gain from destroying us, but she's little more than Sigurd Ringer's appendage. And who knows where he stands? I know, with a name like Sigurd Ringer. Let's talk later. You have to be a good host. Good luck and watch your back. Grazie mille. Following the initial meet and greet, everyone toasts to your father and digs into the, the meal. 
Food covers every inch of the table, and freshly brewed meat seemed to flow endlessly. Where are you going, Ketil? You're listening to Nephia's usual complaints about her mother when Ketil perks up and slips discreetly out of the longhouse. Outside, some piece of pottery crashes against the ground and men begin to shout. In short order, the door flies open and the doorway is filled by Uttar Alinson, sword in hand. Outside, you see his brother standing over the prone form of Ketil. Uttar looks around the room with disgust. What a splendid feast for such a shit thane. Uttar's gaze stops on you, he raises his sword to point at you accusingly. Falki. Your family had its chance to earn our respect and you wasted it. Come outside and defend your honor, or we will burn this hall to the ground. If you jumps to her feet, already holding her knife, her voice seethes with disgust. Uttar, you miserable drunkard, how dare you attack your thane's honor during his own feast. Your family will pay for this. Uttar has, turn, has turned his back on you and is already walking back outside. All the other guests turn their gaze to you in anticipation. Your mother leans in to whisper in your ear. You have to handle this. In the other, if the other saints think we're too weak to deal with such a blow against our, our family's honor. <laughs> Needing an answer the word. These will not stand. Nephi, are you with me? The shadow sets across Nephi's face, but the gods is going to make us kill him this time, isn't he? I hope Kettle is all right. Kettle. There's P to you followers. There she is. She uses a knife and a spear. Equipment, yeah, I know about equipment. Yeah, I know how equipment works. Spear. Alright. <laughs> Trophy Day Nags, Old Bow, your shield! Inventory. Okay, uh, of course it's a um, two-handed axe. Nah. No shield. We're gonna smash people with with our axes. Mead, though. Alright. Let's see what they want. I don't think they want a taste of our axe, but that's probably what they're gonna get. Smacked in the head with a huge axe. Long loading screen. All right. Most of the guests follow you outside and form a half circle behind you. You're dimly aware of the other saints muttering among the, among themselves. Nephi runs over the kettle to help him back on his feet. A streak of blood runs from his hair down his cheek, but it looks like he can still fight. Four against one. This is what the sons of Arli Arlinger, Aling, Torgisil's son <laughs> consider a fair fight. The, I thought his names were going to be fairly easily pronounced, uh, since they. This is where my language comes from, the the old old Norwegian, old Nordic, old Norse, or whatever they called. But no, Uttar's brother Tostes nears. He sounds drunk. Shut your mouth, woman. He started it. If you create a fight so much, there are proper ways to handle this. I I I'm not gonna send them home. I'm gonna smash them. You smash them. They dare question my honor. Uttar shifts his weight restlessly as he regards the things assembled behind you. Late for second thoughts, when Aslefer is our Thane, he can judge the honor in what happens here tonight. Aslefer steps forward and draws his weapon. We got to fire Uttar, there is no honor in this, I must tell take tell, tell Kvalki's side here. For a moment, confusion mixes with fright in Uttar's eyes, as Falki's tongue falls out of his mouth. But he quickly composes himself. Fine, we'll kill you all, then I'll be Thane. All right. So let's see. She uses a spear. Can't. Can't check out the inventory. Attacks the target three hexes away. Does that mean that she? <laughs> yep. She has range. She has range. Green and red means you can move in the green area and still attack. Or spend attack to move into the yellow area. Yellow and red ring means you can attack from where you stand, or convert your attack to extra movement. Yellow and gray means you have no attack, but you can move. Gray means nothing. So I think I have range as well.
Those are all moves, that means also action moves, I take it. Smash him. <laughs> that was... Oh, whoo, that was um, satisfying. Was he incapacitated? Alright, this likely happen often, both you and your enemies. When herdmen get incapacitated, they can be revived during combat or left down until the end of combat. If the enemies kill, the red hex at their feet will disappear. If you decide to leave a herdman incapacitated, they risk getting an injury. The longer they stay down, the worse the injury becomes. It's best to keep everyone on their feet. Alright, sure. Sure. Quick attack seems good. 80% chance hit. That's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First one hits. That's very good. And second one hits as well. That's a critical hit as well. Oh, hey, oh. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Ranging shot on him. Satisfied. Fatigued. Was he fatigued? No. Spotted. Okay, yeah. Information button. Cannot use low cover. Ranged attacks versus character have 25% accuracy. Alright, cool. He's indifferent. <laughs> Just shot him with an arrow and he's indifferent. Ah, the Allingson, untrained healer. Aight, aight, aight. Asliffer, you're the tank. Yeah, defender, apparently. Hunter, scout, leader. Seems about right. Three enemies remaining. Oh, there's a guy. Alright. We'll move up and, and threaten that one. And I will move up here. He's a bull, so I'm gonna place him in cover. Cover blocks attacks completely. There's no partial cover. You're either in cover or you're not. Cover protects you against ranged attacks from the direction of the space with the cover. Catch you with low cover will automatically stand up to shoot over it. Oh, but it will also be forced to stand up if an enemy stands next to him. All right. <laughs> with stupid dude just crouching down. I'm gonna shoot you with my arrow. I cover still works with characters standing, which requires movement to shoot at enemies on the other side. You move over over here as well. Threaten him from this side. And you are where you're supposed to be. <laughs> what does demoralize do? No! Oh, that's not nice. Use reckless strike on him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seems good. Wait, what happened to me now? Demoralized Mac Max accuracy have doesn't matter. Accuracy only for ranged attacks. Unbalanced. Lose all moves at the beginning of next turn. Shouldn't shouldn't matter. I think we're. Clean it up now. There's your accuracy. 40% chance. No, that's not good. Move up here. And now I can't use quick strike. <laughs> he missed. 80% chance. Okay. Oh, it's done. Yeah, you stun him. Can't attack. No, you can move though. Alright, cool. Lure gives every ally extra movement. Which I think was necessary for her to get over here. Now you can quick strike him. Quick shot, sorry. Incapacitated. Sorry, Ada. You're down. And I'm not. That's what you get for attacking me during my father's funeral feast. No new injuries. Utility items. 
Otaralin son groans as he tries to sit up on the frozen earth. Kettle walks over to the sound of the defeated farmer and kicks his weapon away. Oh, I almost collected. Utar's surviving brothers are slowly getting to refeed as well. None of them has any fight left in them. Nephi regards the survivors with a mixture of disdain and sadness. What do you do with them? Well, I want to show myself as a strong thane, you know, and we're, we're going to execute them. I'm not going to let them go for now. We'll deal with them another day. That seems like a recipe for stupidness. That does not sound smart. Execute them. The grim work does not take long. Your guests look on solemnly as the snow in front of your feast hall turns red with the blood of the farmers. If any of them doubted your resolve before, now they see what you're made of. <laughs> Just running over. I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> oh, oh. I thought they were gonna chop their heads off or something, but they stabbed them in the gut until they fell down. Okay. Aslefer steps forward. He looks not least tired from the fight. I supported you here tonight because Uttar and his brothers were out of line. It is not the way of our clan to kill each other in drunken brawls. Falki is on the Farulfur. I challenge you to duel for the position of Thane. An excited murmur rises among the guests. Ketil mutters in a voice too low for anyone other than you and Nephew to hear, even though he is closest to Aslefer. Can you believe this Bishusonr? <laughs> Bishusonr uh, means son of a um, dog? Probably uh, a, a bad word. Bishu means dog or mutt, maybe. I'm not sure how you want to pronounce that or uh, translate that. It is right to issue such a challenge. His timing could be better. Aslefer, son of Grimvardr, I accept your challenge. He nods, apparently satisfied. We will meet on Hormgen Island at noon on the morrow. May the gods favor you. Yes, I agree. May the gods favor me. Exploration. Alright. Cool, 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 cool. 